Hey there, I'm so, so happy that you're tuning in today and I uh, hope you're having a really, really, really good day. I just literally um, two hours ago connected with Shane. Shane has had trouble sleeping for about six weeks, started taking Ambien about four weeks ago, wants to get off the Ambien, wants to sleep better, and we are going to see what um, we can share with Shane to help him on this journey. So before we go there, um, as always, nothing here is medical advice to Shane or anybody else, but just general advice, general thoughts that I hope will be helpful to anybody that is tuning in. Now, let's get to this email. So two hours ago, Shane writes me the following. Hi, Daniel. I came across your YouTube channel and I find it a fantastic resource on insomnia and I hope more uh, people suffering from this issue are able to benefit from it. Since you're offering, I thought I'd bounce a few questions off of you. I pretty much randomly developed severe insomnia about six weeks ago. I wasn't stressed at all at the time, so it was very odd. Although I suspect it changed from one or two bad nights into a continuing and worsening problem due to my capacity to worry about health-related issues a little too much. Thus, the classic vicious cycle. Over the first two weeks, the problem got worse and worse until there was a stretch of three nights over a weekend where I got probably three hours of sleep total. After that, I felt so drained, I went to the doctor to hopefully find what was wrong. He prescribed Ambien, and that has had mixed results at best. Although after a couple weeks, I was getting some good nights, I wish I hadn't started the prescription in retrospect and based on some of the things you've covered. But myself and my doctor seemed to lack helpful knowledge on the issue at the time. In week six, almost four weeks of Ambien, it seems like the benefits of the Ambien are now starting to decrease. I do have CBTI starting uh, soon, thankfully, but I'm still a bit confused about the best way to both approach CBTI and also get off meds in the most effective way. Luckily, I understand now that my good nights aren't only because I took a pill, but I would like your thoughts on how to best transition off Ambien and approach CBTI before the usage of filth becomes a real issue for me in the long term. I know you can't provide medical advice, but just looking for opinions uh, and based on your experience. So I, I sent a quick email back there to Shane asking if I could do this podcast. He said, okay, and then added, sure. And I'll add a few details. Um, I, it was, sorry, I had a few details. I typically spent a very easy eight hours sleeping per night before my bout of insomnia and the first week of ambient slept three to four. I then cycled into this good night slash bad night cycle for a couple of weeks where I was sleeping two to four hours one night and then six to eight uh, the next. This week, I'm back to three, four uh, hours, unfortunately, as I fill out my first week CBTI sleep diary, sleep log. Could be just an off week, but we will see. Again, just throwing this out there uh, to see if it adds to our discussion. And it definitely, definitely does. And we'll get back to that in a little bit. But first, uh, thank you for reaching out, Shane. And um, I, I wanted to just touch on a few things before getting to your specific questions here. And the first one was, I think the way you describe how your insomnia, your insomnia developed is very, very accurate and, and is really how it starts for most people. You have this like random night where you don't sleep for some odd reason. And um, for, for those people that, you know, happen to not think too much about it, uh, it typically just like resolves and you kind of forget about it. But if you have like a tendency to worry, then you can start to think about like, why am I not, why am I not sleeping? What's wrong with me? I got to do something about it. This is becoming a problem. And that, that the worrying, the preoccupation, the concern actually becomes the problem. That becomes what keeps the insomnia going. And you describe it as a vicious cycle. And I think that's very, 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 um, on, you know, <clears throat> very, very correct. That's, that's the way it happens. So I'm happy you, you see, you, you have already come to that realization and that makes me very optimistic that you can reverse it as well. Now, uh, second thing I just want to comment on was how you see your doctor, you're having trouble sleeping, doctor prescribes Ambien and you say, neither of us really knew what we were doing there. I think that also is, you know, you're describing that, um, that uh, interaction so well it's it's a very unfortunate it's actually super super unfortunate it, it, still it's it's 20, 2019 and most people still when they're trouble sleeping like the first thing they do is see their doctor there's a huge opportunity there that is we're not taking advantage of at all and what's happening is that that doctor as you say has no education about insomnia knows really very little about cbti and they don't really know what to do neither do you 
but they feel the doctor, of course, wants to help. So what they do is they prescribe a medication. Um, I hope that, um, you know, efforts that myself am engaged in and other people in the field, that we can get to a stage in the near future where that interaction becomes more like, hey, I have a hard time sleeping. The doctor goes, I understand. Well, read this pamphlet on CBTI and, um, you know, spend a little less time in bed and then go to see this this person that will help you. I hope that will be the future. But anyway, um, now let's get to your, more, your specific questions. So um, the first one is how, how, you know, what's the best approach when somebody um, is, on, uh, is on a medication and uh, is starting CBTI? Well, um, what I do in my clinic is the following. It's, it's, it's hard to like start do two things at the same time. It's hard to start both CBTI and come off medication at the same time. So what I do is I start the CBTI, start you know treating the insomnia with behavioral techniques. And, and once that patient is like regaining sleep confidence, sleeping better, then you can wean off the ambient. That is, that is my typical approach. Now, um, another thing I wanted to, to comment on was you said, luckily I understand that my good nights aren't only because I took a sleeping pill. In fact, I would say the following, that it, it's important, it's actually very, very important for you to know that every single minute of sleep that you have slept, ever, in your whole life, in fact, is natural. It's your own sleep. Nothing can make you fall asleep or make you stay asleep except your own sleep drive, your own like innate, internal need for sleep. Now... Some people will say, well, I heard so-and-so takes a sleep medication and, just, and they just it just makes them sleep. No, it doesn't. But what happens is the following. Uh, imagine that somebody has knee pain, okay? And uh, they just cannot walk up the stairs. Well, if they're prescribed a, a painkiller that takes away that knee pain, they can now walk up the stairs because they no longer have pain. But, in, but that person would not start to think, you know, the, the painkiller is making me walk up the stairs because it's just like you wouldn't you just wouldn't make that assumption or association or link but unfortunately that happens a lot in sleep so let's say you have trouble sleeping you're anxious and medication can relieve that anxiety reduce the anxiety that's keeping you from sleep and then you sleep now what a lot of things times happen is that people think that the medication is making them sleep it's keeping them asleep or making them fall asleep which it cannot uh, it can just remove anxiety and like and like um, preoccupation and things like that. So um, just know that. Just know that all your sleep has always been your own natural sleep, and nothing can make you sleep except yourself. You know, it's good to think about that, know that, because it will boost your sleep confidence. Uh, so just want to point that out. And um, and then finally here to get to some more specifics. So. Um, you know, uh, you said here I typically uh, spent a very easy eight hours sleeping in the past. Uh, maybe you did, but I suspect that you may have slept a little less than that. And I base that on the following: if you do like surveys on like healthy adults that have no trouble sleeping, uh, it's very consistent. Most people will say I sleep about seven hours, and that is because most people go to bed at let's say eleven and get up at six and don't have any particular trouble sleeping, so they just think I slept seven hours. They didn't. You know, when you check this objectively with uh, like, you know, the kind of Fitbit style actigraphy or an EG where you check brain activity, most people sleep about six hours, so about an hour less. And it happens because most people go to bed, let's say 11, fall asleep 11, 20, they spend like 20 minutes up at night and then they wake up 20 minutes before their alarm halfway and then doze off and whatever. But they, 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 they don't remember that. They don't remember that. So they think they slept seven hours, but really slept six. So... Uh, let, let me just make this assumption that you, Shane, um, need to sleep about seven hours, you know? And and where am I going with this? Well, the key technique when it comes to CBTI, like what, what everything really re revolves around is this thing called bedtime restriction, which it w works as following. So you um, you pick a bed uh, wake up time and let's say that's 6 a.m. And that has to be like very consistent, very strict every morning, even if you have a terrible, terrible night, get up at six and stay up. Do not sleep during the day. And then, and then you go to bed about like, you know, a little less than you need to sleep. So let's say six and a half hours before your wake up time. So that would be like 11 p.m., 11.30 p.m. in fact. So you have to stay up till 11 p.m. Don't go to bed, uh, don't get up, uh, sorry, before 6 a.m. And, and, and that is called bedtime restriction. It works by like, you know, 
you, you keeping yourself active and out of bed and not sleeping during the day, you build a strong sleep drive. The sleep drive overcomes any anxiety and, uh, and, and preoccupation, things like that, and makes you fall asleep and stay asleep. That's really how it works. And, um, you know, if you want to exp- uh, kind of consider that even before you see your CBTI therapist, that's your choice, obviously. But uh, if you don't, you can just wait to see them, but expect to hear something like that from that therapist. So um, I hope this um, was helpful to you, Shane. And I want to say a big thank you f- uh, to you for allowing me to do this podcast episode because I, I really think, um, you know, when people in Sama hear about another person that had go- going through the same thing, uh, it, it makes you feel less isolated, less alone, knowing that other people are going through the same thing. Um, so if, if you, Shane, have any other questions, uh, anybody else has a question, please leave a comment or send me an email, daniel at insomniainsight.co. And I hope to have you back here real soon. Until then, take it easy. Bye-bye.